Good afternoon, everybody. You know, I've been here getting a little feedback on uh, <clears throat> on some things, and uh, yeah, I think it's I think we're going to start throwing in some tips along on the videos. I was considering doing a video just on the mill. I think how we're going to do this. I just did your first lesson um, on flatness. This is going to be the very first thing I would do to a milling machine. Not everything. The first thing we're going to break this up as I go along in these videos. We're going to, we're going to give you tips and tricks. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to talk about stoning. Um, I don't pull the gibbs out and stone them, but uh, oh, um, the gibbs, just like the table, and you're going to hear me talk about stoning here, high and low spots. Every milling table has high and low spots. And I don't care how well it looks like it's surface ground. When you start stoning the table, you're going to see those high and low spots. My table was covered with them when I got it. And then remember, I say that machine was damn good when I took it out of the crate, and it was. Um, now it's just that much better. So anyways, um, I'm just going to throw something in here real quick before we move on to the video. Um, it's a short video. And we're going to break this up in, in pieces along the way. As I do videos, I'm going to start throwing in uh, information on this. I think that's how I want to do it. Um, uh, your gibbs also have high and low spots in them. So one of the very first things I do, along with stoning that we're going to talk about in this video, is I also do the gibbs. I take all my gibbs out, and I find all the high and low spots in them, and then I start working with stones. Oh, we do that. And when you're moving the table, when you adjust your gib and you're moving the table or you're moving the head up and down and it's moving fluently, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. And all of a sudden you feel, feel um, tightness on your handle. That's a high spot. It's either on your dovetail or it's on your gib. Once you stone, once you stone the gibbs and, and bring them into you, then you know that high spot's on the dovetail. And it's going to happen in the same place every time. So it's not even difficult to find out where it is, where you need to work the dovetail with a stone. So this is your first video. It's short and to the point. Um, this is just going to be the first of many. So uh, I'm getting set up on the receiver back here, start cutting the internals. And I went ahead and did this first. So enjoy this. And if you have any questions, email me. Ask me specific questions, and I'll give you specific answers. Um, Again, this is just one part of what I've done to this mill. Okay, I thought I'd better throw this in there. And again, here, you, you notice I forgot to introduce myself. <clears throat> Anybody new to my videos, uh, please watch all my videos. Um, my name is Jeff. This is my little machine shop here. Um, I need to throw this in. Um, when stoning, figure eight. I, I was sitting here getting ready to produce this short little video, and I realized I didn't even touch on that. When you stone, let's go over here and take a look real quick on the table. Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you a real quick little demonstration. All right, so here's our stones, and we'll just do it right here on this table. All right, you're going to do figure eight. Some areas, say if you're on something like this, this might be a little difficult. So, but we do figure eights. I've never even, even worked this back here. It's all worked up here on the, on the um, base of the, uh, the floor of the vise. But toolmaker stones, and we do figure eights. Always do a figure eight. This, this allows you to stone evenly, um, getting the same pressure evenly across the table. Uh, if you do this, if you do it that way, you're, you're going to put more pressure on the front of that stone, or you're going to put more pressure on the back of that stone. It's going to be uneven. I'll never forget Tony when I was an apprentice. Uh, Tony was my go-to. Actually, he was my very first subscriber on this YouTube channel. Tony trained me in milling machines. Uh, Tony's retired now, and, and uh, I love that man. I mean, to, to this day, all the guys that trained me have a place in my heart. Um, I'm humble over what these men taught me. And that's what we do in the toolmaker trade and the machinist trade. We hand our skills down. And um, <clears throat> I'll never forget him teaching me the stone and square. That was the very first thing I learned was what I'm showing you right now. Just the very first thing he made me do. And he taught me the 
I mean, they gave me the best, best knowledge that one could possibly get. Um, we worked for a company called EG and G back then. Do a uh, do a quick Google search on EG and G. You'll find out where I come from. But anyways, figure eight, figure eight, and that's it. Enjoy the video. Okay, I thought I'd show you um, how flat my part is in this vise. And then we're going to start throwing in details on how I get this to happen. So we're going to bring the head down and we're going to run that hand right up there to the zero, just a few thousandths to zero. Oops, sorry, I went <laughs> a little fast, huh? Let's bring it back. Okay, so that's unloaded. Now we're going to load it to zero right there. I'm going to lightly lock the head. Now I'm going to traverse it. And we're going to see it with our own eyes why my, that my parts truly are within a half a thousandth. All right. Now you see that little bobble in the needle? That's the lead screw turning. We're not quite to the half a thou mark yet. Now it's probably going to go back down. So there you are. We're sitting, we're sitting right around a half a thousandth, um, just a hair more than a half a thousandth. If you remember, my flatness when I squared this was um, when I originally did it, and it was still warm when I took it out. Remember, it was seven ten thousandths, and then the next day I did it on the video. It was five ten thousandths, and we're sitting right now at about. Let's take a good look at this. Let me make sure you can see that. We're sitting literally at a half a thousandth <clears throat> flatness across there. And that's sitting in this vise. And we're going to start talking about how I get this machine to do this. And these are one of the tricks right here. You're looking at them. Toolmaker stones. That's where I started. So I'm going to finish setting this up so we can get moving on this. One thing else I need to mention. Um, now these stones, I stoned my table, I stoned the bottom of the vise, I stoned the floor of the vise, I indicate everything in, and, and I'm going to show you an indication during uh, this, this video of my table. Um, I'd say about this long, and the whole width of the table, I'm going to show you that my indicator, I can zero it on the table, and I can move it anywhere in about a 9 to 10 inch envelope here. And that needle doesn't move at all. My table is perfectly zero flat. Now, one of the things we, I didn't mention here, as you just watch that needle come across here, you'll see that I have permanent marker on the top of this. Right here where I started the needle, it didn't have any permanent marker. Then over here, it finished on the permanent marker. And that's where we saw it raise uh, a, right at a half a thousandth. If I took that permanent marker off, my guess is we'd, we'd be even flatter than a half a thou. So anyways, that's your first mill trick. Stones. Learn to stone your table. My table, my table is stoned beautifully. I stone this table every time I take a fixture off, the, uh, the vice comes off, the rotary um, the indexing fixtures go up, any of that, everything is stoned. I, I, I absolutely make this a priority, is to keep my table stoned and silky smooth. Silky smooth. Um, you need to get these. These are toolmaker stones. This is going to be the first tip I'm going to give you in getting uh, your machine to cut perfectly flat, as flat as it can possibly be. A half a thousand, that's phenomenal. For a small milling machine like this, um, I know there's not a toolmaker on this planet who would disagree with me on that. What I've managed to get here was finesse. I took my time. I just stayed at it until I kept indicating in, and my hand stopped moving. My table is absolutely stone beautiful. The bottom of the vise again, stone beautiful. The floor of the vise in here, run an indicator across your floor and bring each side. See, there's two sides of this vise and bring these together. 
this one is was lower than this one at one time. This was about a thousandth higher than this, a uh, thousandth and a half right in there. And I just stoned this side. I stoned them both together, get all the flaws out of them. High and low spots. We're going to bring those in together. And then I concentrated on just this side of the base of the floor of the vise. This over here, up between the jaws until I brought them down to where my needle didn't move. Now you're looking at that part. You saw it with your own eyes. That is a half a thou all the way across. And all my squaring is that perfect. But it took elbow grease to do it. And also, we're going to talk about the gibs, the dovetails. As I progress through this video, I'm going to start throwing in tips and tricks on how to get your milling machine to cut as flat as possible, parallel and square, perfection.